If you can't love yourself, how the hell are you gonna love somebody else? Not your average drag queen. <clears throat> let me rephrase. The queen, queen of, drag. of drag, RuPaul themselves, have graciously let us in on their Architectural Digest home review. So excited to see how dazzling their Beverly Hills home is. Welcome back to my channel. If you have not met me before, my name is Phoenix Gray, AKA Design Daddy, where we talk about everything interior design related. If you're not already, subscribe to my channel and you can follow me on all my socials at Mr. Phoenix Gray. Today, we're gonna take a tour through RuPaul's Beverly Hills Home with Architectural Digest. Now this is our disco room. We love music, we love to dance. And you know, when I was coming up, there was always a place where it, that said, cocktails, dancing, doesn't happen anymore. So we decided we needed a disco in our house. So we're starting off strong with the disco room as RuPaul calls it himself. Honestly, I think this is super cool. Although the black and white high contrast look is not personally for me, I think this maximalist look was done so well and so appropriately to not overwhelm the space, but still give you a really good design aesthetic of what we're about to walk into for this mansion. One of my biggest pet peeves is disco balls that aren't done correctly because most of the time the scale of them is so off-putting when they're put in a room, but the fact that they've used these at all different scales that perfectly proportion to the scale of the room, the height and the size are done absolutely perfect. Another great feature I really love about this room is that all the furniture that they have inside is on wheels. So the fact that they can have a quick bite to eat, roll everything out and turn it into a complete disco room, I think every room needs one of these, especially if you're hosting and if you're dancing like me, it is amazing. Q, you're never gonna see me dance because I look like a fool, but I may enjoy myself. <laughs> that is a bad idea. <laughs> And of course on the walls, we have many of my favorite disco artists. Some who are not so disco, but they're all beautiful and inspire us to dance. You know I've said this before, but art is at the forefront when it comes to any home. And the fact that this room is surrounded by inspiration of these beautiful photographs of disco icons through the ages, I think is so appropriate, not only for this house, but for this room, 10 out of 10. This is our kitchen. Again, it's very bold. This is a stove that is made by a French company called La Cognou. And orange is my favorite color. You're gonna see a lot of orange in this house. I love these lighting fixtures right here because they remind me of those underwater scuba gear from the 19, I don't know, 30s and 40s, but they're just beautiful. The kitchen, it's a lot. If you do not like that high contrast, it is not for you. Honestly, it is not for me because there is just so much black and white. The iconic statement of the black and white flooring, I think is so timeless in most designs, but when in contrast with a black and white cabinet front, doesn't do it for me because it takes away from the overall appeal. Orange being RuPaul's favorite color, I get it. It is brought up in so many accents and I think is done really well in the overall aesthetic and design. Definitely not for me, but remember, this is their home. This is exactly what they wanted. This is exactly what they got. And this is exactly who they are. Another really interesting competing feature that I find doesn't work with the kitchen is the book matched marble. I personally love it. I know it's a very polarizing interior design style that you either love or hate when it comes to it because it has such an unusual aesthetic to it. Book matched mar <clears throat> book matched marble itself is meant to be a statement alone. And I find adding in this dramatic effect that is also juxtaposed with the orange, the black and white cabinets, and the black and white flooring is so minimal in comparison that it just adds too much visual clutter overall. I do really love and appreciate all the Hollywood Regency aspects that are brought into it, especially these pendant lights that I think go so perfectly with the style that they're going for to give a really kind of bold statement, but still subtle enough to work with all this black and white. This breakfast nook is so fabulous. 
So much light, so much life, and I tend to gravitate here. As RuPaul says, this breakfast nook is absolutely fabulous. The entire design around it really matches so perfectly with who they are and the overall aesthetic of this home. The details of this black and white that really contrast the orange in this space, the fact that this breakfast nook is its own standalone room just off of the kitchen, and the fact that it's round, it also really allows you to appreciate this almost 360 degree view that you get of the backyard with the pool as well as the kitchen. The chairs themselves don't look overly comfortable to sit on just because the back themselves don't look very sturdy, but overall I think give a really nice artistic approach to adding that extra contrast to the room and that beautiful brass fixture that he said once was owned by Yves Saint Laurent I think is a really unique touch. This is what we call our dining pavilion. Now it was inspired by an Elizabeth Taylor film called Boom. I was on board with everything until I saw the outdoor pavilion room. Honestly, the black and white stripes are giving me Beetlejuice vibes and they're just not for me. I understand the design aesthetic and the style intention behind this and where they want to go to achieve this look. But for me, of some place that you're hosting with a really high energy environment like this, the black and white contrast that continues from the ceiling to the floor, it does look really unique for the space. But I feel like if you're in there for too long and if you're on something, <coughs> <clears throat> you're gonna have a bad trip. Welcome to my office. It's like living in my own personal Hermes box. This office is absolutely jewel worthy and I think the way that they described it was so perfect. They said it's like living inside an Hermes box and I think that's the exact intention you get from being in the space. Most people typically avoid a high gloss satin paint but I think it works so perfectly with the coffered ceilings and the entire millwork for the surround being enveloped with this finish. It really creates a unique effect with all the reflection and all the light bouncing off of the actual bookcase themselves and the feature lights of surround, really lighting up the entire space that would typically be fairly dark if you used this kind of orange pigment. I think one of the coolest things that RuPaul mentions in this and the design of their home is that orange is their favorite color. Orange brings them so much happiness and joy when it comes to it. And I think that is so perfectly explained in detail throughout the home. Find that color you love, like he said, and use it in your space. Color is so emotional when it comes to your well being. It can make you feel so many different things and change the dynamic of an environment that you're in. So I encourage you as well to find your favorite color, use it in your space because it is a game changer. Now, this is my walk in men's closet. We took two bedrooms and turned it into my closet. And I've got everything in here. It's, it's kind of like a historical artifact. So first up for the closets, we have the men's closet for everything that they wear day to day. And honestly, having two bedrooms converted to this, this tour does not do it justice. The amount of bags, shoes, and beautifully colored outfits that are in this space, I cannot imagine the history behind everything that's in here. And I would love to come over just to see all of these beautiful pieces because I can only imagine. Not only do I love interior design, my second passion has always been fashion. So being able to see like some of these archival pieces that RuPaul has in the closet themselves, I would absolutely die to see or even try on. The fact that they we're both almost the same size knowing sure as hell I would be able to fit into some of these things. I'll squeeze my fat ass into some of those pants if I need to. <laughs> <laughs> Cue RuPaul's laugh. <laughs> now we wanted the back garden area to have space for people and parties and pool and possibly even do shows. You know, if we put a little slab up over the jacuzzi, we could have chairs out here and have a show up there or project a movie up there. The outdoor space is so unique. The way that they designed it was to host and that's exactly what people in LA do. They have these incredible outdoor spaces that are a flex space for indoor and outdoor where you can have these great parties. The pool is beautiful. The fact that they have the jacuzzi raised on this almost stage means that they can convert it to a stage themselves to have performances, shows, and 
I honestly would die to be invited to one of these parties. Now, this here is the office workspace. This is the heartbeat of my operation. I love just the mix between wild energy and then the classics. I love that juxtaposition. So the flex working office, I think, is really nicely done. It really contrasts a lot of busy, maximalist details, like the leopard print that surrounds all the wallpaper and the drapery, right down to a lot of those neoclassical elements, like the table, the chair, even a lot of the marble sculptures really juxtapose those two styles but are done so beautifully when they match with that black and white. This is our living room and we've given our decorator, Martin Lawrence Ballard, full reign. Now Martin was inspired by great lady designers of the 30s and 40s like Dorothy Draper and Elsie DeWolf. Right off of the office is their living room and I think it is another really perfect example of how maximalist can be achieved in a style that's done really well without it looking like you're a crazy hoarder. A lot of these jewel tones that are expressed throughout the space really play off of that black and white contrast but still juxtapose it well enough so it doesn't look overwhelming or overstimulating. This is the epicenter right here. This is the mother lobe. This is the drag archives. Jewelry, shoes, gowns, you name it. It's all right here. In fact, some things, I'm looking at these cuff bracelets here that I've had since 19... 93. Then we go into the drag closet, which I can only imagine how much history is in this room. The years that RuPaul has been famous for and showcasing, literally the queen of drag, has everything they have collected over the years. Some of the things they mention that they've used literally since they started drag, all the way up to most recent items that they've purchased or their stylist has brought in for them. Like I said before, these closets need their own architectural digest review because there is not enough time to go through all the really unique, fun, and bold details that these rooms actually showcase. One of the really unique things about the drag closet that I think is really beautiful from an interior design standpoint is the fact that it was designed to look like a showroom. It literally looks like you're walking into a museum. Everything is on display. Everything is visible. And once again, another really cool feature is bringing that high lacquered metallic finish that is continued onto the ceiling. It gives such a unique unique perspective to the room itself when typically you would just leave it white, leaving it blank and open. But this matches the aesthetic and the style of RuPaul themselves of just being so extra. I'm going to say it. This is the first and only Architectural Digest review that I've seen that I feel actually embodies the celebrity that lived there. It doesn't look staged. It looks so genuine. And the way that RuPaul describes every room in so much detail it's so fun and it is just so that. This house truly embodies what it means to say, this is me. That's it for this video. And RuPaul, if you ever happen to see this video and my review of you, know that I absolutely love you and I would be honored to be invited to one of your parties. Thank you for watching and let me know in the comments below which celebrity home I should review next. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and you can follow me on all my socials at Mr. Phoenix Gray. And if you're ever second guessing yourself, just think, what would Design Daddy do?